Finally, it's here. Goodbye 11, hello iPhone Pro. First and foremost, the stainless steel feels really good. It has a premium feel. Not surprising as it is described as surgical grade stainless steel, the same material that's used in the iPhone 13 Pro. This is much nicer than what I'm used to with my iPhone 11. Such a relief. I'm a massive fan of this reflective look, especially on the side. I feel like it complements the silver and also the white. The silver model definitely looks a lot more white than what I'd expect, but the silver on the side really complements it and makes it look really quite premium and definitely very nice. However, I must say it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. So without in the case, expect to see your fingerprint. I know I said that I'll be getting the purple, but unfortunately my order didn't come through. So luckily my friend hit me up that he's got one available. So shout out to Joe, you might see him in the video. When we compare the iPhone 14 Pro to 13 Pro, they do look very similar, pretty much the same. The only real difference is, is that the camera bulges a lot more, the bezels are a bit thinner, and of course, that dynamic island. A typical Apple innovation, making an uncool feature pretty damn cool. Apple positioned it as an innovation of merging software and hardware. At first glance, I'm totally here for it and a massive fan. I think it looks great and in person it looks better than I expected. Almost like the lesser of two evils. The dynamic island will change shape and function depending on the task or notification at hand. Changing to a larger shape to really grab your attention when required. And then reducing back to a normal size just to hide away in the top of the screen. So when you're using an application like Maps and you swipe up, you can now see that there's still a notification in the dynamic island to show you that the Maps is still running. Another example is when you set a timer. It shows a timer being set and the amount of time left. This can be very useful for someone that maybe use their timer to track activities in the gym or just to track other activities and still be aware on how long is left in your timer. The dynamic island is capable of showing two notifications at the same time or rather showing the status of two applications at the same time. For example, if you were to start a voice recording and also set a timer, you can see how the first app, the voice recording is shown and the timer is shown on the right. My first take of the Dynamic Island was that I like it and that I'm a fan. However, now that I use it a bit more, I find that it's actually a bit more intrusive and more in the way compared to a notch. Look at this comparison between my iPhone 11 and my iPhone 14 Pro. This is more of a preference thing as I feel that the notch on the 11 takes up less space but the dynamic island feels more intrusive because it's within the screen. So there's that clear separation between the bezel and the screen but then the dynamic island sits in it like an island, right? I know that's the point but I just find it's a bit more invasive and it kind of ruins that immaculate screen. Which brings me on to the next point, the iPhone 14 screen. The 14 Pro has a 6.7 OLED screen, the Super Retina XDR display. The same thing we'll see in the 13 Pro. The screens are very similar at first glance, both with the HDR display, true tone display and adaptive 120 hertz. For myself, coming from the iPhone 11, this is a huge upgrade and I must say that 120 refresh rate is really noticeable and looks a lot nicer. Another upgrade that Apple really spoke on was the fact that the Pro Max can now reach 2000 peak nits brightness. This basically means your phones are a lot brighter and a lot more visible, especially outdoors. As an avid runner, as someone that likes to use my phone outdoors when I'm out and about, my iPhone 11 was barely visible and this killed me a lot of the time. But this brightness will make a massive difference and make things a lot more visible. Speaking about that visible screen, we now have an always on display making your lock screen visible just at a quick glance. So if your desk and you want a quick update, you can just take a quick peek at your screen and see those updates. One thing to be conscious of though, is that when your phone is really bright and your brightness is set quite high, the screen looks like it's on and it's just too distracting for me. Personally, I'll be turning it off as I don't really see the benefits of having an always on, always on display 
Firstly, it's going to be detrimental to your battery. And secondly, it can be quite distracting. Imagine you're in a meeting and your phone is just constantly on. All your notifications get shown. That's for me is the reason why I'll probably be turning it off or keep my phone on low brightness. But then again, defeats the point. So you may as well just keep it off, right? Interesting enough though, the always on display, especially when your brightness is set quite high, looks very good in the dark scenario. So if you're out and about at night and you just take your phone out, that always on display is very visible. Described as the pro camera system, we can see the main lens has been upgraded to four chip megapixels from the, I believe it was 12 megapixels and the ultra wide and telephotos are the same at 12 megapixels. These lenses are poised to be twice as good. Although I don't know how a camera can be twice as good, Apple claim these are the case, especially when it comes to night mode. This is something that I'll do in my detailed review when I have the phone in my hands. Apple have included the Photonic Engine, which will be used to process the images to a high quality, especially those images that will be shot in Pro Raw at 48 megapixels. I'm very keen to actually put this to the test again and see how these photos actually come out. I'd even compare it to something like a Sony A6400 or an A7 III, just to really see how it compares. When it comes to video, we have the same quality as the previous iPhones. However, the massive improvement is the ability to have cinematic mode now shooting at 4K 20 frames per second, which is the film standard. So when you want to have something with this sort of effect in 60 frames per second, it won't look that good. So it's quite good to see Apple have incorporated this. So here's an example of what I've recorded in a short amount of time. We also have action mode, but unfortunately I wasn't able to test this one. So again, this will be something to look forward to in the full length review. So far, using the phone for a couple of hours, I would say this definitely is Apple's best phone yet, but only ever so slightly. If you have an iPhone 13 Pro Max, save your money. I don't think the Dynamic Island is worth the upgrade. I don't think that 40 megapixel camera is worth the upgrade. And I feel like these are just small, small upgrades. However, if you have an older phone like an iPhone 11, definitely always push for the latest. If the iPhone 14 Pro Max is out of your budget, 13 Pro Max is still a very good phone and possibly can get it a lot cheaper with it being last year's model. Look forward to the full length review coming out soon. I make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment if you hate the island, if you love it, if you hate iPhones and you're an Android person, leave a comment. So again, make sure to follow me on Instagram as well and TikTok and all the other good places. Peace.